Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we learned about the correspondence between linear and rotational motion. So, we have derived some important expressions related to rotation. We saw that L or the angular momentum which is a vector can be expressed as I omega, where omega is a vector which is the angular velocity and I is a tensor. So, I is known as the moment of inertia tensor. Also, we saw that energy can be expressed as half I omega squared or in terms of angular momentum as L squared by 2 I. So, we talked about the expression of energy and we also mentioned that L is quantized and given by h cross root over j times j plus 1. So, the energy expression that we obtained for a diatomic rigid rotor is E equals h cross squared by 2 i j times j plus 1 that is h square by 8 pi squared i j times j plus 1, where j is the rotational quantum number. So, before we go into details of the rotational spectrum for a diatomic rigid rotor, let us get a physical understanding of the origin of this form of spectroscopy. The primary condition for obtaining a rotational spectrum is the diatomic molecule should have a permanent dipole moment. So, let us consider a diatomic molecule for example, hydrogen chloride or HCl which has a permanent dipole moment. So, here we have this HCl molecule and there is some partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom and some partial negative charge on the chlorine atom. And this hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom are separated by the internuclear distance which is given by r. So, the dipole moment is given by this q dot r. So, we see that when this molecule rotates and if the dipole moment is measured in a particular direction, let us say we are measuring the vertical component of the dipole moment, then this dipole moment or the vertical component of that dipole moment changes in a sinusoidal wave pattern. So, in other words, initially the HCl molecule was like this, then the rotation happens and then the HCl molecules becomes parallel to the x axis, then it further rotates and it becomes again vertical. So, we see as the molecule rotates, the dipole moment is going through consecutive maxima and minima. So, because there is a wave pattern, there is a frequency associated to it. So, if you remember when we are discussing light or the electromagnetic wave, we define wavelength and we define frequency as the number of full wavelengths per unit time. So, now when we shine light or electromagnetic wave on this rotating molecule, the frequency of the light which resonates with the frequency of rotation is absorbed. So, we can think this to be a form of resonance spectroscopy. The energy difference corresponding to the rotating frequency 
is equal to the energy gap between the rotational quantum levels. So, thus we can see that only heteronuclear diatomic molecules like HCl, because they have permanent dipole moment, they will have change of dipole during rotation. Hence, light matter interaction will take place. On the other hand, if we think about homonuclear diatomic molecules like hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen etcetera, they do not have a permanent dipole moment. So, there is no change in dipole moment during the rotation. Hence, no light matter interaction happens. Thus, we can say that this homonuclear diatomic molecules like hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen etcetera, these are microwave inactive. On the other hand, the heteronuclear diatomic molecules like HCl, carbon monoxide, they are microwave inactive. So, now going back to diatomic rigid rotor. So, where we have two masses m 1 and m 2 separated by the internuclear distance r such that the mass m 1 is r 1 distance away from the center of mass and the mass m 2 is r 2 distance away from the center of mass. We saw in the last lecture that the moment of inertia i can be written as m 1 r 1 squared plus m 2 r 2 squared. So, this molecule HCl or any other diatomic rigid rotor rotates end over end about the center of mass. And because it is rotating about the center of mass, we can write m 1 r 1 equals m 2 r 2. And also we can see from this figure that r 1 plus r 2 equals capital R. So, we can write r 1 equals capital R minus r 2 also r 2 equals capital R minus r 1. So, now let us look into this equation m 1 r 1 equals m 2 r 2. So, we can write m 1 r 1 equals m 2. So, instead of r 2 we can use this expression for r 2 that is r minus r 1. So, if you accumulate all the terms which has r 1 on the left hand side we have m 1 r 1 plus m 2 r 1 equals m 2 r. So, if you take r 1 common I have m 1 plus m 2 equals m 2 r or I can write r 1 equals m 2 r by m 1 plus m 2. So, this expression tells us we can express r 1 in terms of the masses m 1 and m 2 and the internuclear distance r. So, similarly let us start with the same equation m 1 r 1 equals m 2 r 2. So, now instead of putting r 2 equals r minus r 1, we will put r 1 equals r minus r 2. So, I can write m 1 times r minus r 2 equals m 2 times r 2. So, again I can write 
m 2 r 2 plus m 1 r 2 equals m 1 r. So, this will give us r 2 times m 1 plus m 2 equals m 1 r or r 2 equals m 1 r by m 1 plus m 2. So, now we have obtained a similar expression for r 2 in terms of m 1, m 2 and r. So, why are we doing this? So, we will see this now if we will go back to this expression for moment of inertia i equals m 1 r 1 squared plus m 2 r 2 squared. So, I can write this as m 1 r 1 times r 1 plus m 2 r 2 times r 2. So, we know that m 1 r 1 is m 2 r 2. So, let us put this m 2 r 2 times r 1 plus now here instead of m 2 r 2 let us put m 1 r 1 that is m 1 r 1 times r 2. So, we can write i equals if we take r 1 r 2 common m 1 plus m 2. So, now I have already derived expressions for r 1 and r 2. So, let us put back this expressions here. So, r 1 I can write m 2 r by m 1 plus m 2. For r 2 I will write m 1 r by m 1 plus m 2 times m 1 plus m 2. So, this will cancel out. So, I will write i equals m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2 times r squared, which we will write as mu r squared, where this mu is the reduced mass of the system. And mu is expressed as mu equals m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2. So, thus we can see that the system rotating around the center of mass is equivalent to the rotation of a single particle of mass mu which is the reduced mass of the system. So, this single particle of mass mu is rotating around the center of mass. Why is this? Because when we are looking at this single particle rotation, we saw i or moment of inertia is given by m r square. So, here for a diatomic molecule, the moment of inertia is given by mu r square, where mu is a reduced mass of the system. So, we can think as if the there is a single particle of mass mu is rotating around the center of mass with a radius, the radius of this rotation is the internuclear distance or bond length that is given by r. So, now because we have found the relation between uh, the moment of inertia and the reduced mass, let us look into a problem where you need to calculate the reduced mass and the moment of inertia of a diatomic molecule. So, the problem is calculate the reduced mass that is mu and the moment of inertia that is i of dcl. So, given the bond length of the molecule is 127.5 picometer the masses of D and C L are also given. So, first let us find out the reduced mass. We know mu equals mass of D times mass of C L divided by mass of D plus mass of C L. So, let us put the values that is 2.01410 times 
9685 divided by 2.01410 plus 34.96885. So, this is in AMU. So, if you do this calculation, the answer you will get is 1.90441 AMU. And also, 1 AMU equals 1.661 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. So, we can write mu equals 1.90441 times 1.661 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms equals 3.16 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. So, this is the answer to the first part where we needed to calculate the reduced mass. So, now let us look into the second part where we need to calculate I or the moment of inertia which is given by mu r square. So, we have already calculated the mu that is 3.16 times 10 to the power minus 27 this is in kg and r is 127.5 picometer. So, we know 1 picometer equals 10 to the power minus 12 meter. So, we will write 127.5 times 10 to the power minus 12 meter squared and if you do this calculation what you get is 5.14 times 10 to the power minus 47 kilogram meter squared. So, now we have found out the reduced mass and the moment of inertia of a diatomic molecule that is DCL. So, going back to the energy expression we saw for this diatomic rigid rotor, we can write E j for the jth rotational level equals 8 squared by 8 pi square i j times j plus 1. So, the unit of energy here is in joule. So, let us see how do you get this unit. So, the unit of H is joule second. So, 1 joule is given by kilogram meter square s to the power minus 2. So, unit of H is kilogram meter square s to the power minus 2 times seconds that is kilogram meter squared s to the power minus 1. And also the unit of I as we saw in the last problem is kilogram meter squared. So, this j is a rotational quantum number it has no unit and all the other things pi and eight are constant. So, the unit of E j is kilogram meter squared s to the power minus 1 squared divided by kilogram meter squared. So, this you will see it will be kilogram meter squared s to the power minus 2. So, this is the same as this. So, the unit of energy here is in joule. So, now we have already discussed in module 1 that it is more convenient to express energies related to rotational spectroscopy in wave number units or centimeter inverse. So, we know that E equals h c nu bar. Therefore, from this we can write nu bar equals 
E by H C. So, we already have the energy expression in joule. Now, if you want the energy expression in wave number that is nu bar j, I can write this equals E j by H c that is H square by 8 pi square i j times j plus 1 divided by H c and that is nu bar j is h by 8 pi square i c j times j plus 1. So, this expression we got for the energy in wave number units. This can also be written as b times j times j plus 1, where b equals h by 8 pi square i c and if you expand i as mu r square I can write h by 8 pi square mu r square c. So, b is known as the rotational constant and the unit of b is centimeter inverse or wave numbers. So, we can see that b is inversely proportional to i and also i is proportional to the square of the bond length. Thus, determination of b from the spectroscopy experiments will result in the determination of internuclear distances that is r or the bond length and thus rotational spectroscopy represents a very powerful structural technique. So, as bond length or internuclear distance can be determined with high precision from microwave spectroscopy, let us illustrate this using an example. So, the question we have is the B value estimated for HCl is 10.59 and here again the masses of hydrogen and chlorine are given in atomic mass units or AMU. So, we have to find out the bond length of this diatomic molecule HCl. So, first we see that B equals H by 8 pi square I C or in other words equals h by 8 pi squared mu r square c. So, in this particular problem we have to find this r or the bond length of the HCl molecule. So, for this we need to find the reduced mass and we already know the value of b. So, from there we can get the value of r. So, let us try to find the reduced mass here. So, mu of HCl is given by m h m c l divided by m h plus m c l. So, this is 1.007825 times 34.9688527 divided by 1.0078250 plus 34.9688527 this is in atomic mass units and if you do this you get the answer in that is 0 0.97959 amu and in kgs we can write this is 0 0.97959 times 1.6 
six one times ten to the power minus twenty seven kilograms. So that is one point six two seven times ten to the power minus twenty seven kilograms. So this is our reduced mass. So from this I can write R squared equals h by 8 pi squared mu v times c. So, let us put the values the value of h is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds divided by 8 times 3.14 squared times reduced mass that is 1.627 times 10 to the power minus 27 uh, kilogram. The value of B is given that is 10.59342 centimeter inverse and we can write C as 3 times 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second. So, if you do this the value of R square that you will get is 1.62464 times 10 to the power minus 20 meter square. And if you take the square root of this then R becomes 1.274 times 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So, you can either express this as 1.274 angstroms or we can say this is 0 0.1274 nanometers. So, once we know about the energy expression, we can put different values of j to find the energies of these different energy levels. So, first when j equals 0, we know the energy is 0. So, we can say the molecule is not rotating at all. The other energies for example, when j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3. So, the energies, so for j equals 0 it was 0, when j equals 1 it is 2 b then j equals 2 is 6 b and j equals 3 is 12 b and so on and so forth. So, we can continue to calculate energies with increasing j values and in principle there is no limit to the rotational energy the molecule can have at normal temperatures. So, so far we have learnt about the expression of energy in joules and centimeter inverse. We have also learnt about the energy associated with each rotational level. In order to obtain a rotational spectrum, transitions should happen from one energy level to another. So, we have to ask the question now between which levels can the transition take place? Can we get peaks corresponding to transitions? between any two j levels. So, in other words the question is what change in rotational quantum number j is allowed for a rotational spectrum. In other words what should be the allowed value of delta j. So, because we know the energies of each level if we know what delta j is allowed for a diatomic rigid rotor with permanent dipole moment, we would have an idea about the rotational spectrum. To answer this, we need to know the selection rules of rotational spectroscopy. So, in the next lecture, we will discuss in details about the selection rules of rotational spectroscopy.